स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया now there are also some other types of engines which are uh, popular for airships one of them is the turboprop type the turboprop type is basically it comes in two versions actually one is this particular figure where we see that a turbine in this case an actual flow turbine having a compressor combustion chamber and turbine on to the compressor shaft you attach a gearbox and that drives the propeller so why do we need a gearbox to reduce the rpm of the propeller hmm? at what rpm does the turbine normally move in a gas turbine engine what is the rpm of the turbine typical value Take a guess. No, it's more. It's around thirty thousand RPM for a typical turbine. In fact, for very high power turbines in uh, commercial aircraft, you can also expect sixty thousand RPM. You can. And at what RPM do you rotate the propeller of an aircraft engine? So why don't you guys have any feel for numbers? these are very simple engineering numbers you can calculate so many things you can do so many coding but you don't you have any feel for basic numbers no that is less it goes to 1000 even 2000 sometimes okay. and small motors with which you play they go at much higher rpm what do you think amit what rpm are your small edfs 54000 rpm correct so small small motors but you cannot put a prop at that rpm it will break away under the excessively high centrifugal forces plus it will be inefficient it can't extract the energy power at that particular rpm so from 30000 to 2000 or 1000 you need to bring it down using a gearbox and that makes it very heavy that brings in maintenance costs okay so <clears throat> what is the other variety of engine that can be used if i want to couple a turbine to a propeller one is turboprop as shown here is there any other type of engine that you have heard of so now what is happening to the exhaust here the exhaust here is it giving you some thrust how much percentage correct 15 to 20 percent sometimes. 10 to 15 percent is a good ballpark. Very good. Okay, so the exhaust of this engine is also giving you thrust. But suppose you don't need thrust; you need power. Yeah, thrust is welcome because if you are giving forward force, rather than getting from the propeller, you can get it from the engine itself. It will give reaction. but sometimes you may not need it so have you heard of something called turbo shaft engine in that we close the exhaust or we do not use the exhaust for giving thrust the entire power of the turbine is absorbed by the propeller such engines are used on helicopters for example turbo shaft engines in airships also we can use turbo shaft engines but they are not normally used normally we use turbo prop engines now this is a constant question that gets asked or it comes to the minds of the people who design airships now when i say airships i am talking about now passenger carrying airships i am not talking about rc airships okay so let's have a look at a few comparative matters between turboprop and piston prop for a 
passenger carrying airship. First we will go for turboprop. So, it has a higher initial cost. It is more expensive to buy turboprop. So, why is that? Compared to IC engine, it is much more costlier. Correct. The fact that you have a gas turbine cost will go up because that will have compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, high RPMs, very, very careful aerodynamic design. So, therefore, they are costlier. But they give you better power to weight ratio. They give you lesser maintenance man hours per flight hour. This is a term which is used to comment about the maintainability of an aircraft, MMH by FH. So, what it means is how many hours have to be spent, man hours in maintenance per unit hour of flight. So, what is your what is your feel? Let us say take an aircraft like MiG 27, which is a you know high speed turbojet with reheat. What would be the maintenance man hours per flight hour? Yes, good good approximation around 20 to 30. Okay. That means you fly it for one hour and then 30 hours of maintenance is needed by one person or one hour by 30 people, whatever combination you like in between or 2 hours or 15 people. So, around 20 to 30 man hours are needed per hour of flight. What kind of number do you expect for a commercial transport aircraft which flies for let us say 16, 17, 18 hours a day? Again, it is around 8 to 10. Okay. So, this particular number is lower for turboprop compared to piston prop. Around 3000 hours is the time between overall. For a, Now, when I say MMH by FH for an aircraft, engine is not the only thing. Engine is one part of it. There are other parts which consume time. So, do not get confused between aircraft MMH by FH and the engine MMH by FH. As far as the engine is concerned, the time between overall and the time required for regular maintenance is more important. So, that number is lower for this one and it gives you higher speed capability. You can fly with 250 to 300 knots, but it has got a higher fuel consumption. However, the fuel is ATF, aviation turbine fuel, which is nothing but a refined type of kerosene with some additives. This is much cheaper than the gasoline. Those of you who listened carefully to my case study on airships of Uttaranchal, we realized that the consumption of fuel was more in case of the piston props, but in case of airships compared to helicopters. But the cost was, uh, I mean, the, uh, there was a difference because of the cost. Turboprops have lower initial cost, but they have low power to weight ratio, higher MMH by FH. Oh, this is a mistake, it should be 2000 hours. I will correct this. Okay. So, this is 2000 hours. Speeds never more than 200 knots, true air speed. Fuel is costlier. The fuel used is F gas or aviation gasoline, which is petrol plus additives. So, since kerosene is cheaper than petrol, therefore, the cost of ATF is generally lower than cost of F gas, also availability. So, that is why turboprop may actually have higher fuel consumption, but they may turn out to be cheaper to use because of the lower cost of the fuel. So, what is the cost of petrol today in the market? Around 64-65 rupees. What will be the cost of ATF? It will be approximately 100. Okay. 
then air gas that is that is basically air gas refined petrol kerosene what is the cost of kerosene in the market much lower it's 25 30 rupees and therefore if you use atf it will be also relatively cheaper but these costs are artificial i must always say because of the consumption okay so the first airship to use turboprop as its principal powering system was the skyship 600 so i have to show you a small film about this airship maybe i have shown you this film before don't know but let's just see this is the launch the launch video of uh, the skyship 600 maiden flight The uh, handover of the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Cardington, the traditional shrine of British airship aviation. Now this famous landmark houses the latest generation of lighter than aircraft, designed and built by Airship Industries and packed with state-of-the-art aviation technology. Have you seen this film? The world's media were out in force to witness the 600's maiden flight, Sorry? reflecting the global interest in this multi-purpose craft. Mid 80s. The 600 is a stretched version of the earlier Skyship 500, with passenger capacity doubled from 10 to 20 seats, cruising speed increased to 55 knots, airborne endurance to a remarkable 48 hours, and virtually every other aspect of the craft refined and upgraded. Satisfied with the running of the twin turbocharged Porsche engines, Chief Test Pilot Commander Nick Bennett was now ready for takeoff. Take off and land vertically 
next to craft unique gun like airships. Gone are the days when vast tracts of runway were needed for their operation. The skyships of airship industries can easily take off and land on unprepared ground the size of a football pitch. Once on the ground, the ship docks quickly and easily. Secured to the mast, she needs no further tethering, nor restraint. The maiden flight had been an unqualified success. The uh, concept has been to take a jolly good old idea of buoyant flight, and then to use new materials uh, to the best advantage in order to get the structure weight down as low as possible, and this is now um, achievable. So the use of the new materials is enabling us to save weight and weight in an airship is absolutely fundamental because the gas has got to lift the structure and the payload. You can get a structure weight down to next to nothing, obviously, you have more payload. That's exactly what airship industries have done. Already the Skyship 500 is in service in the United States and Japan. And after this tremendously successful maiden flight, the 600 is heading for even wider markets. <laughs>